Three days and nine picks later, the San Francisco 49ers have closed the chapter on the 2023 NFL Draft. I'm here to recap it with general manager John Lynch. John, I know you haven't had a second to take a breath, but when you look at the nine names you added to the roster, what's the feeling you take away from this weekend? Uh, I got a lot of pride, pride in the process, pride in uh, the people that I'm blessed and fortunate to work with. Uh, you know, not ideal circumstances, not draft until 99. I have to keep telling my, myself in the second round, all right, we got Christian McCaffrey in the third round. That's <laughs> Christian McCaffrey in the fourth round. That's Christian McCaffrey. And next year in the fifth, that's Christian McCaffrey too. But then to be able to add, uh, you know, with the nine players, I think they all have, you know, we always talk about to draft a player, you better have a vision for exactly what we expect this player to be and what is our plan to allow him to be that. And I thought we did a, a great job as a group collectively of having that vision for each and every player. And we made ourselves a better football team this weekend. You started with 11 picks that went down to nine because of the trade with a team that had a lot of its core intact coming out of free agency. And then you added more talent in free agency. What is the expectation for these nine young players walking into the building? Uh, come in and compete. Come in and be their best every single day. Come in here. Uh, they're really fortunate that they're coming into a locker room full of pros. And so uh, if you don't work, uh, which I know every one of them will, because that was a big... Uh, litmus test for us are these guys the type of people who will succeed in this environment with the Fred Warners of the world with the Javon Hargraves with the Eric Armsteads uh, the Javon Kinlaws uh, you know with the the Brock Purdy's and Trey Lance's uh, the Debo Samuels you better come and you better work and and uh, you know we believe this group is up to the task. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the day two picks. So it took uh, some finessing, I think, with the Minnesota Vikings in order to make that trade up to 87. What made Jair Brown a must get at that spot? Just an excellent football player. One of my favorite players in the draft. And I think a lot of people around this building will tell you that, um, you know, just a, a football player through and through and, you know, I think the best safeties, you have to be able to do a little bit of everything. Uh, and Jair, you start up at the ball, excellent blitzer, excellent in run support. As you start to move back in coverage, a really good coverage player, and then he gets the ball. You know, we, we pride ourselves on taking the ball away. And he's 10 interceptions over the last couple of years. He's always around the ball. He plays with tremendous instincts. You know, there was some knock about his, his 40 at the combine. I'm, I'm glad he ran what he ran at the 40 because it allowed him to be there at pick 87 yeah. because this is a guy, you know, when we look at our R&D, our analytics, he's one of the faster safeties in the stack this year. So, um, you know, our eyes showed, showed us that on tape. This guy plays fast, a lot like Talanoa. Um, and the numbers and the data spoke to that as well. So that allows you to, to, to have that conviction. We brought him in for a 30 visit, and, and this kid's special. He's got, a, he's got a special, infectious personality. He's been through a lot in his life at a young age, and he's come out on top, and, and uh, now he's going to work to, uh, to get to the top again. I, I think he's going to make us, I know he will, a better football team. I can't wait for him to get here and start working. Love to hear that. At 99, a bit of an unconventional pick yeah. for the 49ers aside from his near perfect kicking record what were the other deciding factors that went into that early move for Jake Moody well I think you have to when you're talking about a kicker uh, big shoes to fill with Robbie Gold Robbie was an excellent kicker for us has had an incredible career in this league and so it's a high standard and uh, you know we knew that Jake Moody had the talent I think the whole league knew that um, you also want to know a little bit about the makeup of the guy. And so Brian Schneider did a great job getting out there, kind of on the stealth, worked him out, um, took him to dinner, did a bunch of different things during his workout, uh, put him, tried to put him in duress. And, uh, you know, he, he, he passed it with flying colors. And Schneider came back really convicted on him. And uh, I would love to tell you I'm a kicking expert. I'm not. <laughs> I can look at the data. I can look at the percentages. I knew Jake was really good. What I was more concerned, because you could see the ability, what kind of kid is this guy? What's the makeup? Everyone at Michigan swears by him and his, his grit, his toughness, his ability to shine in big moments. And uh, Schneider felt the same way after, after visiting with them, and that, that left us convicted. Uh, a lot of people say third-round pick on a kicker. We believe we got a really 
good football team, an opportunity to be a great team. Points are uh, uh, of a premium, and uh, kickers happen to be involved in that in a big way. So we felt like it was worth it, and uh, I, I think had we not, I think people were, uh, I believe there were people trying to move up to get them, and so uh, I'm, I'm happy. It takes some conviction to do that, and I'm happy to place that uh, allows us to do that, you know, and go, go do what you think, and we were able to go up and get a really good player for us. So day three, names are flying off the board. How heavily did you have to lean into that collaboration that you talk a lot about between personnel and coaching department to make sure you lock down the right guys? It's everything. You know, the, the goal is to how do we get better as a as a team and, and the, the more minds working on it together, uh, coaches, um, scouts, uh, R&D, our pro scouts even get involved in the process. And, uh, you know, and ultimately somebody's got to make those decisions. That's charged. You know, I'm charged with that. Kyle's charged with that. Ultimately, he and I get together, but we do late in the draft. We do a lot of live like polling. OK, we got these two guys here. Who's got this guy? Who's got this guy and why? <laughs> And a lot of it is just gathering consensus, uh, gathering a feeling, talk that vision I spoke to earlier. Who do we have the best vision for? And um, you put it together like that. First three picks of day three, all on the defensive side of the ball. One of those was for defensive end Robert Beal Jr. You mentioned a particular stat that you guys use. <laughs> I was wondering if you could educate us on that that made him a good fit for yeah. this organization. We talk a lot about, if you watch Chris Cassera coach, uh, he's always telling his guys, get off. And uh, you know, it's about that initial, when the ball snapped, he wants that quick trigger and he wants guys getting off. And you know, our guys have come up with the stat, you know, with the interesting acronym, I'll leave alone. Um, <laughs> but it, it goes to that, that initial get off. It's about your like two yard explosion, your first two steps, how quick. And so we measure that and Beal had the top one in college football this year as we measured it. And uh, we, he, he's, uh, he's incredibly long. He's a six, three player, but he's, he's like 34 and five eights arms. So that's, that's, and he ran a four, four, seven. So he's a gifted player. Um, had a lot of intel out of there. Kirby Smart's been good to us. I went down to Georgia this year to watch them practice and uh, got to see Robert there and uh, got more and more convicted on him. We think he's going to be a tremendous addition, add some speed and versatility to our defensive front. In that sixth round, you take D Winners, a linebacker out of TCU. He said he's studied uh, Fred Warner pretty extensively. How much of the Fred Warner type feel do you see in him? Well, it tells me he's a smart man if he's studying <laughs> Fred. Yeah. Um, probably more of a comp to Fred's uh, compadre, uh, Dre Greenlaw. We, we feel like they're very <laughs> similar players in terms of their suddenness, uh, maybe being a little shorter in stature and not the biggest linebackers, but they make up for it with their quickness and suddenness and both playmakers. So those are big shoes to fill. We got to start at the at the bottom with D and, and he understands that. Um, you know, I, I joked in there with the press, you know, my daughter goes to TCU. So it was a good year to be at TCU because they had a lot of great players. But I went through there about three times uh, to see their football program, but also to see my daughter. And every time I'd go through there, they'd talk about D winners being a leader of that team, uh, the, the voice of that defense. And so that those things stick with you. Three picks in the seventh round. Who of those three prospects now draftees were you most excited about seeing being available in those last few picks of the draft? All of them. I mean, Braden Willis was a guy, um, you know, we had in our fifth round in terms of our grades. And so for him to be there was really nice. Um, you know, Ronnie Bell uh, probably slotted him, you know, around that seventh round round, but a guy that we really liked and we wanted to add to our football team. And so to be able to bring Ronnie in, a uh, tough receiver, made a lot of big plays for Michigan, has some punt return uh, ability to him. And then Jalen Graham, when we took D winners, it was a discussion, which one do we want? D winners, Jalen Graham, um, you know, it was split, but ultimately D winners uh, took our, you know, we took our pick with him, took our shot. And so for Jalen still to be there at the end of the draft, uh, you know, talked about bringing him in as a free agent, but we said, hey, let's let's have some certainty to this. And we landed Jalen Graham, a guy we really liked and were intrigued by. So all in all, really good, good draft. And, uh, you know, it, uh, we're, we're just getting going, but I'm excited about seeing these guys uh, come to work. Last question. The work's not done. 
the undrafted free agent list is getting filled out as we speak. But what do you have to say just about your entire personnel department and all of the work they've been putting in? Awesome. Um, you know, from Adam Peters, who, who does such a great job around here. So, you know, it's the first guy I hired uh, when, when I was putting together my staff. I got to know him in Denver. Adam does a tremendous job kind of pulling the whole thing together. Tarek Ahmad, uh, if there's a better college scouting director in football. I've got to meet him. But uh, Tarek works tirelessly, tremendous leader. Um, all our national scout, scouts, all our area scouts, uh, they're the unsung heroes here. They, they, they grind. They're out on the road a lot away from their families. They're excellent, though. Our coaches appreciate them because they respect them. Uh, and you know, I think the feeling's mutual, and it's it's a beautiful thing to watch those two groups. Where sometimes in buildings there's friction, um, everybody's just working for the same goal. And uh, you know, really, like I said, just have an immense amount of pride for the way we do it. And uh, you know, I think fortunately Kyle and I get along pretty well and see <laughs> football the same way. We challenge each other during this process. Um, and ultimately, we got to make the call, but it, it's made a lot easier by all the people, our R&D, our pro scouts, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Matt Plonsky and the R&D, they do a tremendous job. The whole building really pulls together, and that's why we're going to go celebrate this draft right now. Thank you for your time, and thank I can't you, wait Lindsay. to see the final roster. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>